What is going on, y'all? It is the Caveman back at it again with another video. I had a whole video planned out ready to go today, and then the recording like corrupted, and I was really upset I wasn't going to have a video today. But then everything transpired with the Ravens, and here I am. Real quick, Mott's Applesauce, if you're ever hungry, thirsty, whatever it might be, Mott's Applesauce will satisfy whatever satisfying you need to satisfy, consume, eat, drink, uh, just take in your Mott's Applesauce. I promise it will never fail you. You have the Caveman guarantee. Uh, my, oh my, I, I am taken aback by what just happened in the AFC North. A matter of what seems like two weeks i don't even think it's been two weeks since jk dobbins went down the ravens have lost four key players they first lost jk dobbins as i mentioned then they lost justice hill the guy that was going to replace jk dobbins and then they lost gus edwards today and then at the same time on consecutive plays in practice they lost marcus peters their all-star cornerback I don't think I've ever heard something more cursed in my life. I could sit here and just blame it on some silly curse, but at the end of the day, how does this actually happen? Uh, I think it's a combination of being a really, really crazy and sad coincidence in combination with a bad practice field. Playing sports growing up my whole life, I never thought the playing surface made that much of a difference, right? As long as it was relatively flat and didn't have any holes, then it really couldn't be that bad, right? I mean, that's the way I always thought about it. I never grew up playing on some fancy fields or anything like that. But you know, now that the NFL is having these injuries happen so often that are non-contact, I can only sit here and blame one thing, and that's the turf. Like, I mean, there's just so much evidence backing up the fact that good turf is extremely important, and this is just another example. There's just no logical explanation behind why the Ravens lost four guys to damn near the same exact injury on the same field. There's just no explanation. Well, maybe it wasn't the same exact field. It might not have been. I don't know the exact details, but at Ravens practice, they're just, there's more than a coincidence behind that, I feel like. Like, there has to be a contributing reason, and those four guys are pretty damn important to that roster. Breaking news, TJ Watt just re-signed with the Steelers, but anyway, um, wow, I, I'm just so taken aback by what happened today. That is just, that's some shit that you, you just never expect to happen. Like, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I'm speechless. What does this mean for the Baltimore Ravens? As we all know, after J.K. Dobbins and Justice Hill went down, the Baltimore Ravens went out and signed veteran running back Le'Veon Bell. And now they also lost Gus Edwards. So now it's down to Le'Veon Bell and Tyson Williams. I believe that's how you say his first name. Maybe it's Tyson, Tyson. I'm not exactly sure. He's got the apostrophe there. So it might be, I don't know. Doesn't matter. They're down to two guys now. What does that, what does that mean? Uh, I'm thinking, you know, Lamar Jackson has the ball in his hands a lot more than he has ever before. Like the Ravens are down to two guys. One guy being Le'Veon Bell that they just signed the veteran running back. And Tyson Williams, Tyson Williams that was an undrafted free agent after the 2020 draft. So they have one guy that actually knows the playbook. The other guy's a veteran free agent that they just signed. They're down to Lamar Jackson pretty much in the backfield. I mean, those two guys are going to help. But at the end of the day, the workload is going to go on Lamar Jackson's back more than it ever has. And I just really, really hope that they've been working on that pass attack because if Lamar Jackson has to run the ball any more than he has in the past, the Baltimore Ravens are going to struggle severely. And I mean that with, I mean that wholeheartedly. Like, they need to be two-dimensional. If Lamar Jackson's having to run more often than he did before now that all the these injuries happen they're going to be in a world of hurt and i understand that the baltimore ravens are afc rivals to the buffalo bills but at the end of the day it's just a game but this is to them that's their livelihood they're not going to be able to go out there and play the sport that they love that they grinded so hard to get to i mean injuries like this can really derail a player's career this is extremely sad taking out the rivalries and all the afc bullshit this is horrible to see like you never ever want to see anybody get hurt let alone four key players to one team getting hurt within two weeks that that's unheard of. So it will be interesting to see how the Ravens cope with all of these injuries. They are an elite coaching staff. I think they'll be able to handle it, but it's just not ideal with the season just, you know, a few days away. They play on Monday night. It's right around the corner. This is not ideal at all. Do you think what the Ravens are going to fall back on is Lamar Jackson having the ball in his hands more often than not? And, you know, that could be a good thing. That could be a bad thing. I guess time will only tell. I wanted to give you my thoughts on that because it was breaking news. It's something crazy that I wanted to give my two cents on. There it is. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, please Please like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. If you want to hit the bell to be notified when I upload, I'd appreciate that. If you go over to Twitter, follow me over there. I'd appreciate that as well. Part of the built-in Buffalo content creation team. If you enjoy Buffalo Bills content, be sure to follow and subscribe to us and any social media you may have. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.